Drunkers, and welcome to another Drunk Review. Today, I am reviewing the Ashport Archives Memory of the Hoopway. I think I pronounced that right. The sad thing is, is I've heard the author say the name a couple times. But it's even phonetically said in the book. So, yeah, we're just gonna go with Hoopway. The author is my friend Stephanie. Um, you may remember her from the box swap we did together. She makes YouTube videos. I will put a link to all of her stuff down below. So go check her out because she's awesome. It is also the second in the Ashport archives. The first one being Search for the Phoenix. This is the first time I've ever reviewed something that a friend of mine has done on this channel. And it feels a little weird. Also, uh, when she signed the book for me, she said, To Katie. Others may forget you, but never forget yourself. And I thought that was just a super cheesy thing to sign the book with. But after reading it, I'm like, oh, okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> Love you too, Steph. You know what? I'm terrible at these things. I'm just going to read the back. Things have been going great for Love and Connolly ever since she took on the role of conservator of Ashport with only a few minor hiccups. That is, if you don't count unleashing the evil Queen Mab back into the world and possibly killing her best friend. Other than that, everything is running smoothly for Levin and the rest of the Ashport gang. She definitely hasn't been accused of breaking treaties with vampires, nor has she been sentenced to attend a college for aspiring conservators to prove she has what it takes to be one. Her classmates definitely welcome her with open arms, and the staff just love her. She most certainly does not have a new alchemist babysitter watching her every move, and in no way does she have a beautiful, eccentric, and possibly insane stalker. Nope. Everything is just splendid. She can handle all of these problems without breaking a sweat or revealing her true identity to the whole of the conservator community. Everything is fine. Nobody panic. <laughs> and since we just read that, we might as well start with the negatives, get those out of the way quickly. Uh, the sarcasm not coming from an actual character and rather being in the narration is a little weird. And the metaphors and similes don't always work because sometimes they just get too long. Also, the chapters are freaking ridiculously long! I mean, oh my god. That's the first chapter. It is 19 pages long. But it's worth it because the story is really compelling and like really intriguing and you just want to know what's going to happen. I love that the big bad isn't really an imminent threat throughout the whole book because it lends more of a realistic air to it. Sort of like, you know, you have to live your life while you're preparing for this giant battle. And I think that's a really interesting way to tell the story. And I love how diverse the characters are. Um, this book touches more on Levin's asexuality, um, which is really cool. And it more openly states Nigel and Sen's uh, homosexuality slash relationship uh, than the first one did. And that was really cool. I liked seeing that relationship develop and I'm really looking forward to seeing it develop more because they're fucking adorable together. And Darren, fuck, can I be Darren, please? Like, she's so cool and confident and powerful and I don't necessarily agree with how she uses that power all the time, but fuck, I want to be that confident. I did miss Sadie through most of the book. I loved Sadie in the first book and I really hope that the next book sort of follows her story a little more. Stephanie, uh, no pressure. <laughs> God, it's so weird making a video about something that the author is actually maybe going to see. I don't know if Stephanie watches my videos that much. Stephanie, if you're watching, just type dongle in this... Oh my god, dongle. I don't know why I picked the word dongle. But, Stephanie, if you're watching, type the word dongle in the comments. Yeah, I'm sticking with it. Dongle. And everybody else, if you've gotten to this point in the video, type dongle in the comments. Just for the hell of it. Anyway, um, the only character I did not really care for and did not find compelling in any way. Like, even the 
characters that I wouldn't like as people are compelling characters, but Hal is just an idiot. He's very short-sighted, he is very focused, and not in a good way. He is driven to the point of stupidity. I don't like him. So Stephanie, great work. Keep it up. Keep practicing. You have the potential to be amazing. And if you need a second set of eyes on your next book before you publish it, I am more than willing to do that for you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out Stephanie's info down below, and I will see you next time. Bye.